Hi, today I want to show you how you can manage your Shopify store from Airtable. So literally managing thousands of products, variants, tags, images, everything from a spreadsheet. What's amazing about this is that when you connect Airtable and Shopify, your whole team can collaborate on your Shopify store. They can bulk edit products and really work together from the comfort of an Airtable spreadsheet. So this whole thing only takes a few minutes to set up. So let's go step by step how you can do this right now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up Airtable. To set up Airtable, we'll need the right tables and fields that correspond to Shopify. It's gonna look something like this. To do that really easily, we suggest going to whalesync.com, going to templates, and then clicking on our Shopify template. So from here, you can literally just click this open template button for Airtable and copy our template. It will have all of the tables and all the fields you need to have Airtable set up for syncing. Great. You've now got Airtable all set up and Shopify all set up. So the last step is connecting Shopify and Airtable using WhaleSync. WhaleSync makes this really easy. You can just come to our site, click create new, and pick the apps you want to sync. So for this, let's do Shopify first and we'll authorize it. A tricky bit here is just getting the right access token, but let's just walk through those steps right now. So if you go to Shopify and open this up, you can go and see apps from the left-hand sidebar. You can click that and then app and sales channels. From there, we're gonna to wanna to develop apps and create a new one. So you wanna give a name like WhaleSync, um, but let's just do WhaleSync example here and create it. Then you'll need to just configure your admin API scopes to make sure that WhaleSync can access products and we wanna let it read and write products. So we can save that there. Once that's done, you can install the app WhaleSync to your Shopify store and it will give you this admin API access token. You'll want to reveal that and copy it and likely save it because you'll not be able to access this again. So let's go back over to WhaleSync and pop that in. Then for your store name, if you go back to Shopify, it's whatever comes before .myshopify.com. So for us, it's just WhaleSync. For you, it'll be something else. Um, but this little part over here is what you want to grab and pop that in here. We can authorize that there and we'll notice this come up and save. Airtable is even easier than that. You can just click authorize there. You'll need a base sharing link. So in Airtable, you can come back here, click share, share publicly, and then grab this link right there and grab that and put it into WhaleSync as well. You'll then need to just give WhaleSync permission to access your bases so you can search for the one you want, which I believe for us is called Shopify Sync Example and grant access there as well. Now that we've connected to Shopify and Airtable, we'll need to map tables. So this is basically telling WhaleSync what are the things in Shopify, the overarching things like products and variants, and how do I want that to map to Airtable? If you look at what is in Airtable already, we have products, media, options, variants, right? If you use the template, they're all here already. And it makes it really easy on the WhaleSync side. It'll auto map these together and you can just move on there. If you haven't used the template, you might need to go ahead and do this one by one, adding tables like this, right? Um, but again, if you use the template, this should be really easy. And we can go ahead and move on to map fields. So mapping fields is gonna work really similarly to mapping tables. We come back over to Airtable for a second, you'll see in products, for example, we've got fields for all the things that are in our Shopify store. So just to show what that might look like, let's look at a product here uh, called Jeans, right? And we've got a title, we have a description, we've got some images here, uh, different options for color and size, and a bunch of variants. We even have things like tags, right? All of these exist as fields in Airtable. So title, description, media, options, variants, right? That is what we are going to be syncing into Airtable and what we're going to control from our Airtable base. So if we come back over to WhaleSync, we'll see that in field mapping form, right? And now if you take a look at our, let's say, collections field or our customers fields, right? All these fields are already mapped for us, uh, which is really, really great. So now we should be good to go. Let's save that base and we're good and all set up. 
last step here, just turning sync on. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see whale sync start to initialize and soon updates will show up here as well. When whale sync first gets connected, it might have a few of these little issues here, but those will typically go away as the syncing happens and then you should be good to go. Now, if we go back over to Airtable, we can start to see this sync in action, right? It's created our three products here. It includes descriptions and images and tags, uh, as well as the theme template, whether or not it's published to the point of sale. Um, and we're gonna click through the rest of these fields here. But in this last step, I'll pause here for now. We can go through sort of the nitty gritty details, but this is really it. You can now make updates here in Airtable and it'll sync to Shopify and vice versa. Okay, so we've set up our two-way sync between Shopify and Airtable. So let's experience some of the magic of it, right? What's amazing is that if we go into Shopify and make an update, so we call this, let's say, Beanie Black and save, this will, in about 10 to 30 seconds, sync over into Shopify, or into Airtable rather, over there. Right, there we go, boom. Now we can also do this in the reverse, right? We can take this one and make it jeans and maybe we call it uh, white washed jeans, right? Again, 10 to 30 seconds later, we can refresh the Shopify side and this will update as well. Let's give it a shot here and see if it's synced over yet. And there we go. This is now white washed jeans. So this is really the beauty of our two-way sync. Let's start by getting to the details of options and variants. If we take this red shirt as an example product. Uh, what you'll notice is that in Shopify, like any other product, it lets you create options like size, and then Shopify automatically creates variants. So now we've got small, medium, large as variants on this red shirt product. What's great about Airtable and this Airtable sync is you can map that to work exactly the same way. So in our products table, we've got an options linked record over to an options table and a variance linked record over to a variance table. And you'll notice the exact same things. So size over here is one of the options, size is an option for a red shirt, and you see the same three variants. Now, if you wanna create new variants, one thing to keep in mind is that just like in Shopify, you can't just go to the variants over here and you know add a new one this way. The way that you'll wanna do that is go over to the variants and same, same idea in, in Airtable. You're not gonna wanna go directly into variants and add variants this way. Instead, what you wanna do is add new options. So let's say for our shirt, this actually also comes in different materials and we've got, let's do rubber and uh, cotton, right? Done and save. What's happening here is Shopify has saved these this two this new set of options and automatically created new variants from it. And you're seeing this happen as well here. So now all of a sudden the option with two new values is a new type um, in our options table. If we come back over to product, uh, you'll notice the same idea. New variants are being created. So small rubber, medium rubber, large rubber, right? Um, similar idea uh, over on red shirt. Small and medium based on cotton and based on rubber as well. So that's the basic idea. Again, if you're using our template, this is all something you don't have to think too much about, but just understanding how this all works can be helpful. Now, we have a similar sort of idea at play with media. So in uh, Shopify, you go ahead and add new images here. Shopify doesn't actually save that to your product. They save it in a separate media table, and that's why you've got this media table here in Airtable. Now, when you look at a product, you can create a linked record over to media and sort of map uh, a product to a image. So as an example, let's say we wanted to add a new image to this red shirt. What we'll want to do is come into the media table, create a new image and upload. Let's see what we got here in my files. Probably a whale sync logo would be best. Amazing. Let's upload that. And this will get uh, created here in our media table. We can then come into products and map it. We can even give it a, let's say product right here. Let's go to red shirt like that. And so now in our media table, we've got a third image. 
And as the sync works, it will create that image in Shopify. You'll notice this ID has been populated. And so if we come back over to Shopify and refresh, we've got our third image there. So again, similar to options and variants, this really isn't too complicated, but you do have to understand that there are separate tables for media, options, and variants that have information that you link back to products using Airtable's linked record fields. So I hope that overview was helpful in understanding how this all works. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. The Westlink team is always happy to answer anything that comes up to try to help you get set up with your Airtable Shopify site.